Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will focus on the first module, which is exploring the data. And we will talk about the first part of data visualization. You can see in this chapter, we actually had a few sections. So we will focus on section 3.1 to 3.3. .3. And speaking about data exploration, it is basically the steps from transforming the data, visualize the data, and then build the model. That data exploration is very important. It's a very important first step to look at your data, to generate hypothesis, to quickly test on the hypothesis, and to repeat the whole process again and again. So with data visualization, because you will be amazed at yourself generating wonderful and pro professional graphs, and hopefully you will be motivated to learn more and more. First of all, let's open our R Studio. So I'm still trying to open it. It may take a few minutes. If you haven't installed your R Studio, you may want to try to do it by looking at the descriptions in the video. And the first step you are going to do is to type install.packages ggplot2. So this is a function that will help you automatically download this package and the package name is ggplot2. So let me type our topic for today. It is actually chapter three, data visualization in the book. And our focus is just 3.1 to 3.3 .3 because I want to make each video short and you can find just a little bit time to follow. So this is the function to install the package for data visualization. So in this book, we are only using ggplot2 for data visualization. So once you finish typing it, don't forget the um, double quotation mark. And once you finish typing it, you can click the run button here. And I'm going to click to run it so that you can see um, it will take a while, but um, finally the downloaded packages are in some folders. And once it is finished downloading, you can use library function and then you can put ggplot2 either it, with the quotation mark or without because this step is to load the package so you are able to use the functions within the package. So in R, there are many, many, many packages. And so this is a very popular package for data visualization. And we want to use the tools, the functions within this package. So that's why we want to install the package, load the package so that we can directly use the package with the function within the package. So every time you see those like this mark here, it is for making a note. This is not a line of code. It will not run, but you can make a note for yourself, uh, especially your, if you are going to check back on your code, you want to know like what you're typing. What, what did you type in the past? So I often make a note to make it clear. So the data set in the book is called MPG. And one thing you can do is to use a question mark followed by MPG. If you run that, that means you are getting help from R and get help. Or this help specifically, if you are putting a data set name there, you want to see more information on the data. So this data set is actually a built-in data set. So once you use question mark followed by MPG, you are going to see the, the detailed information on this data. Like when the data was collected, what it is about, 
and how many variables you have, what does each variable mean, you are going to see all these kinds of information. And if you use question mark on function, like the library function we just used, it will show you the details of that function, like what parameters you, you need to specify to run the function, and what does each parameter mean. So R can help you a lot by when you just run question mark with the data set name or question mark with the function name. So another thing you can do about the data is to use the view function with capital V to have a big picture like a data frame. You can just to see this data table is like an Excel table, you are able to see each record and each variable. And also in the bottom, it showed you how many records you have and how many variables you have. Another thing you can do about the data is to type DIM on the data set, which is a function to check the dimensions of the data which also means you are checking the number of rows and number of columns the, because they are the dimensions of the data. So if I run this, I'm getting 234 and 11, which are the two values here. And let me type here is to view the data set like in Excel, because all of us are familiar with Excel. Like, are there missing values in the data? It's very important because um, sometimes if you are do, doing some calculations, missing values will stop you doing the calculations. So to check are there missing values, there is a function called is.na. So you can actually run is.na on the whole data set to see are there missing values. But I'm going to show you what this looks like. And if I show is that I run is.na on the whole data set, I'm getting a detailed output on each cell. Like is each cell, each record under each variable, is it missing? which means true or not missing, which is false. We don't want to scroll up and down to check are there any true values, right? True means capital letters for true and for false. So true means the value, the record is missing and false means not missing. So we don't want to do this because you don't want to see so many outputs there. A best way to do it is to use the sum function out of is.na. So in R, you can actually loop all the functions together. Like it will check is.na first, and then it will add up all the values together. So true will get a value one and false will get a value zero when you add up all the records here. And the sum of is dot na will give you a number and that number will me will tell you how many missing values you have. And that zero means no missing values. You have zero number of missing value. And I think that's all for the for the quick check about the data set. Now let's start doing data visualization. So for data visualization, one thing, one function that is very important is called ggplot. Sometimes it's a little confusing because the package name is called ggplot2 and the data visualization function, the function within that package is called ggplot. So every time you type a function, you type a pair of parentheses. And then within that parentheses, you specify which data you're going to use to draw the picture. So for this, for this video, we will be using mpg. 
And one thing you can do is to specify the data equals mpg. And then I'm going to run geom point. Point means you are drawing scatter plot. You are drawing dots. Um, so in this pair of parentheses, we will specify the aesthetic information. Aesthetic information means how you are going to specify how to draw the picture. Um, for example, how do you set up your x variable on the x axis? How do you specify the y, y variable? And you can again in the pair of the parentheses, you type x equals displacement and y equals highway miles percentage, highway miles per gallon. So let's try to run this graph and see what we're getting here. So I just run that those lines. So to run a line, you can just click the end of that line and run it. If you want to run multiple lines together, you can select multiple lines and click run. This is called a scatter plot. And because this picture is a little small on the right side, so you can actually zoom it to see how does highway related to the displacement. And so now you have seen the picture. Let's go back to the reason why we are drawing a scatter plot. The question we are trying to answer here is that we want to know do cars with big engines use more fuel than cars with small engines? Think about this question. We are curious about the engine size. How does it affect the fuel efficiency? So if you go back to the data when we do the help, we can see like each variable name, right? The engine size is actually described in this variable, DISPL. Variable here probably is highway miles per gallon. And this variable is described by HWY in the data set. So you can see, if you go to the data set, you can see there is a variable called HWY. And there is another variable called DISPL. And these two variables are actually able to help us answer this question here, what we are curious about. If you further specify this question, we are actually wondering what does the relationship between these two variables? Are they positively correlated? Are they negatively correlated? Or are they linearly correlated? Or they are like more like a nonlinear correlation? So that's why we draw a scatter plot to quickly visualize on that relationship. So from this graph here, you can see we do have a linear trend, but we do have some like some dots that are kind of outliers. So two on the very top, and we also have a few on the middle right side. So this is about this graph. And if we explore more about this function, you can actually just type ggplot data equals mpg, and you can run this line itself. What you are seeing is just a, a gray um, paper, right? So this function ggplot specifying the data set it is just for preparing a data, um, a drawing paper. So this, this one step is just to prepare a drawing paper. And ggplot is very nice, very easy to learn because it is drawn layer by layer. So it is like you can use the plus sign to add one layer at a time. 
for example, if we move forward, you can just copy it or you can type it with me. So you can draw the GOM the point which is specifying it to be the scatter plot and specifying y and x right you can also move the aesthetic information within the ggplot function so that when you type gom underline point you don't need to specify the aes setup again in the second part of it so let's run it and see see we are getting the same graph as when we typed it in this way but i want to move that information here because in my third layer i also want to use it so i typed gom underline smooth and the little add sign plus sign and we can run these three lines all together like you can either select them or you can just click the end of them because the little plus sign is actually putting together the three lines together see this is the graph we are seeing and the gom smooth this function is getting a smooth trend for the two variables you're you're specifying so you can see the trend is kind of a curved pattern because we do have some disturbing dots dots on the middle right side and this is just a quick notice what is the smoothing method and what is the formula we are using good thing about a graph is that it forces us to notice what we never expected so we are seeing like why the hwy values are uh, kind of high when the displacements are very large like around 6.6 .6 to 7 we are seeing some dots on the top uh, around the middle go back to the data and see what we can do I noticed there is a class variable which is kind of the type of the car um, thinking about like compact mid-size SUV right? class of the car is disturbing the general trend of the two variables so to do that we can type the same thing again prepare our paper specify our variables and then one thing you can add is that you can use color equals class so that class is a variable in the data so when you specify color that means you want to draw the scatter plot in different colors according to different classes of the car so let's run it And you can see we do have about seven classes and those dots here these dots over here they are kind of in a very different color as the general trend of the data and that color is the class two sitter that is about it let me make a note here this is like a basic scatter plot this is like pre yeah prepare the drawing paper i have typed it here and this is like adding a smooth trend and this is like um adding a color information to the dots okay to have a practice you may try to practice those questions from the book and see if you really understand what we were talking about